Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you something quite a bit different actually. Um, it's going to be me looking over the battle groups but for the first time I actually haven't had a look at these yet. Uh, I haven't really had time to have a look at them um, too far in advance of this release. So I thought it'd be really interesting if I did sort of a first look video of the divisions and kind of just give my first impressions and thoughts of the new divisions that are coming out. So we're going to start today with the second infantry Indian head division. If you'd like to read the description of the division, you can check it out on the right hand side. Let's jump on in. So let's first start looking at the recon tab. So this is looking obviously immediately very similar to the other US division we already have, the third US armored. Uh, but we can get these 50 cal jeeps. They do come in with the one star veterancy. Now the interesting thing about these is they do have 1000 meter range, which means they can stay out of range of infantry with 750 meter range machine guns, uh, which could actually make them reasonably good as infantry support in certain situations. They also have the very high optics and good stealth. So I think they'll be actually maybe used a little bit, which will be interesting to see. Regardless, uh, let's go on to the recon. Any interesting transports here? So you can get the Jeep 30 cal and you can get the M20. Now the M20 is a 50 cal vehicle, but it costs 15 points. It's quite expensive. Uh, Ranger Marauders, three man bazooka squad in the recon tab. Now this is gonna be very, very nice because it provides you with that recon capability whilst also having a bazooka. It's kind of like a uh, Razvedka light. <laughs> And they do come in with a two-star veterancy, which is going to make the bazooka really accurate. You can see that it gets 90% accuracy plus the veterancy, which makes the bazooka technically like over 100% accurate, which is kind of crazy. They can only come in the Ford GP and the Jeep. Oh, and one interesting thing about the second infantry is going to be a lot of their infantry, I think, can come in these amphibious vehicles. So on certain maps, they might be a lot better than some of the other divisions. You have the old scouts, they come with the two Thompson submachine guns and the M1 carbine. They can also come in with the M20, but uh, again, M20, I think this is a little overpriced. If it was just like 10 points, I think it'd be a lot better. Um, it would make them worth having a little bit more. But I guess you do get a 50 cal and it's armoured, so there you go. Sniper Squad, of course, um, does have access to the 30 cal Jeep. Not that you'd probably bring the 30 cal Jeep just because it does cost an extra five points and really doesn't do too much. The 750 meter range is the problem there uh, where it can be killed by light arms fire itself. So probably won't do too much. Uh, it does give you an extra recon vehicle, I guess, though, and does have very high optics. So you could, in theory, put it on return fire in the edge of light cover and it might work. Then we have the M8 and the good old M8 Greyhound. Bring in four of these with no vet. You can actually get quite a lot of them as you continue to vet, but basically the same as in the third US. Let's jump over to the infantry tab. This is where things are going to be a bit more interesting because this is sort of new units being put in here. So we've got the assault group. Oh, these are cool. We've got six grease guns and two sub Thompson submachine guns. That's very, very cool. I love those models. They look really, really nice. And they've got smoke grenades. So they're kind of like old Tanko Dasaniki before they got the uh, Molotovs. So I think these could be really, really good. And you get a lot of them. You can bring them in half tracks as well. You don't get that many half tracks though on the actual division itself. Uh, this truck is the same price as the M3A1 half track with armor, but it doesn't have armor. So the GMC HMG. But I reckon this will still be used quite a lot just because an extra 50 cal for every vehicle you bring in might actually be pretty decent. At least that's how it was in Steel Division normally 44. And this is where these divisions are coming from. Of course, there was a lot of work put in to put these into the game. And I think, honestly, if I remember correctly, talking to the developers about it, they were saying how it's actually almost more work to convert an old division like retroactively rather than just make a new one from scratch. So that's something to bear in mind. Anyway, these assault group look really cool. And yeah, getting a lot of them in the late game. We have basics. So these could be really, really strong. You get 12 of them in phase A and 15 in phase B. They are 13 man squads with 11 
M1 Garands and the M1 two M1 carbines there. These are going to be incredible at mid range because the M1 Garand in game is actually way better than say like the Urzatz Truppen and their Car 98, and they only cost 20 points apiece. So they, these are going to be really really strong mid range infantry for sure. And then we got the engineers. These are the same as the ones in the third US. So not much to see here. Just the uh, sort of close mid-range weaponry with the HE. And we got the Rangers LMG. Now these have the new Raider trait, uh, but they have two 30 cows. So basically the same as the unit that you get in third division normally 44. These do actually come in really high veterancy. So two star veterancy there because they are Rangers, I guess. And you can get 12 of them in phase B. That could actually be really nice with the two-star veterancy there. The 30 cal is not fantastic, but two of them in a squad might just do the trick. Engineer leader, we've got, uh, got these boys in here. You can get three of them in phase A. They do come in with HE. I have started to like leaders with HE more often lately, but that's just a normal leader squad anyway. This is interesting. Rangers uh, with the grease guns again. Three Thompsons and also a flamethrower, so six-man squad, kind of like a Sturm Pioneer. It's, it's pretty much the same as a Sturm Pioneer, just a allied version of it uh, with the smoke grenades there as well. Come in at two-star veterancy. Can come in with this uh, amphibious transport, as I mentioned before. Uh, you do only get like 24 of these amphibious transports, so the bigger squads may have less capability to get across the water into the late game. Anyway... Moving on, we have the Ranger Leader. Get two of these at two-star veterancy, and they do have HE again. Now, the one thing that might be quite nice about this is because they have the two-star experience, they give a, I think they have a larger radius uh, in order to give leadership. And that can be really, really useful in certain situations. So something to think about at least. Then we have the standard rifle squads. Now these rifle squads, wow. Okay, so they have two machine guns. These are like Strauki DP on steroids, assuming that the BAR is actually decent. Um, I'm not sure exactly how good this is, because I think the squads that are in the third US have the BAR as well. But... Yeah, in this case, they have two plus the M1 Garands. I think at mid-range, these could be really scary. But the infantry in general in this division is looking really strong. Then we have the Demolition Group. This is a 12-man squad with Flamethrower and Bazooka. Blimey. You can only bring them in in Phase C, and you get 12 of them. Now, these in Phase C could be really scary. Damn. That is an exciting squad. I think they look really cool. And then we have a rifle leader here, which has a sniper as well as a bazooka. Look at this guy here. He's got a sniper in hand and a bazooka on his back. That's just crazy. Absolutely nuts. That's really cool. Okay, so here, I'm not sure kind of what I'd have. I mean, you'd probably take these basics. You could probably just have them in phase A. Um... Probably bring in either the ranger leader or the rifle leader. Oh, you actually get quite a lot of these rifle leaders. So you definitely go for rifle leaders over ranger leaders, I think, because you get more men plus the bazooka and the sniper. You do pay more, though. So infantry could get pretty expensive. You definitely bring these in phase C. And in terms of overall activation points, things are looking pretty good here. You could probably go up to this card where you pay three the first time and then maybe leave the last two because you wouldn't want to put all your points into infantry necessarily. It depends on what's in the other tabs. But yeah, I'm just going to take those out for now. We'll move on to the tank tab. So um, we have the M5A1 Stuart. You can get 16 of these if you bring them in phase B, but generally you'd probably see these in phase A. 30 points apiece with two machine guns and uh, HE on their main gun can make them pretty good infantry support for sure that's going to be interesting reasonable armor so might be able to stop ptrds actually never mind you wouldn't need to because you're on the us side or allied side so what would you be up against like panzer boxes and stuff yeah generally the only thing that would be scary for for the stuart would be sitarungs with the granat boxer i guess 
Anyway, moving on, we got the M4A1 command. Uh, you can get two, four, and six of those. Nothing we haven't seen before here. The M4A1s, uh, you can get two cards of these. Now, one thing that is quite nice is the availability of these tanks is reasonable. So you're going to have quite a lot to work with. You could bring in one in A, one in B, plus the commanders, and then also the rhinos. Now, these boys were in Stone Division normally 44. Very, very cool tank. Uh, just with that little bit extra frontal armor. 30 millimeters of frontal armor. It's quite significant, actually, but you're paying the price for it. You're going 35 points more in order to get that. Actually, 25 points, sorry. So, yeah. I think uh, the Rhino could be really interesting. It does have one less machine gun, though, than the M4A1. So... Yeah, in phase C, I reckon these could give you some serious longevity in a balanced deployment type. That's probably what the tab would look like for me, unless you left out the command M4A1s in order to get like the Stuarts in phase A. That could be a way to do it as well. Okay, let's move on to the support tab. So we do have the flamethrower squads, the two-man flamethrower squads. We've seen these before many times. Um, they do have 30 cow squads as well. Again, just note how most of these can be brought in the uh, amphibious vehicles, but you only have 12 of them in total in the whole division. So where you put them is up to you. And we have the Ranger T30 HMC. Now this is a support gun on wheels, basically. What's the sort of rate of fire we got here? So it's going to be 10 round per minute rate of fire with the two star veteran C. The accuracy is not great. It does have 37% on the heat round though, which is 90 millimeters of penetration. So that's actually going to be quite decent for like popping um, Panzer IVs at least. As long as it doesn't get sniped at range by the Panzer IVs because the Panzer IVs are very accurate. And not a lot of people are bringing them in at high veterancy at the moment. But yeah, the T30, I think this could be a, a nice card to bring in for sure, especially in the early game. Uh, you get four of them, which is a, a lot. And you got your supply, standard supply there. 50 cow squads. That is going to be the commander, of course. We've got the crocodile. British crocodile. In the US division. Interesting. We can only bring them in phase C. But that is very interesting indeed. And might find the way into the deck for sure. Like late game armor wise, this could be really useful. And we got the. M3 Commander and the M20 Commander for Phase C, and then there's the M4A3 105mm. And these come in Phase A. There's actually a lot of really interesting stuff in this support tab that I didn't expect. Now, of course, the M4A3s, we've seen them before, but yeah, definitely the Crocodiles in Phase C might be a nice choice. You'd bring a Phase A Commander and then maybe the Ranger T30s. And that's not exactly very expensive to bring in all of that stuff. But then you've got to consider supply. Uh, and I think the artillery tab in this division is pretty pretty legit. So we might need to squeeze in some more supply there and sacrifice maybe one or two of those units. Anyway, uh, anti-tank tab. Let's have a look. Ooh, we have the Hellcats. That is going to be the first thing that I have to point out here. Looks like a very similar model to the one in Steel Division, normally 44. It might just be imported. But yeah, awesome stuff. We've got the Hellcat in the game. Very, very strong unit in Steel Division Normally 44 because of its speed and firepower, which made it really good in high level play because people were really good at microing these. The APCR has 165 millimeters of penetration, which is going to be enough to get through like a Panther at closer ranges. AP shell, 130 millimeters of penetration. Yeah, this is nice. Some really good firepower on this. Very weak armor though. Look at that, 20 millimeters of frontal armor. Uh, with the abundance of like pack 36s and cheap AT guns on the side of the axis, I don't think these are going to be as strong as they were in Steel Division Normandy 44. But still going to be a force to be reckoned with and definitely a lot of fun with the 68 km per hour speed off road. That's pretty nuts. Do of course get the M10 tank destroyers. Very nice indeed. These again come with decent APCR and AP. They're more or less the same. But the same gun. No, it's a diff slightly different gun, but similar penetration values. So, 
yeah, a, another strong unit that we're probably going to see quite a lot of. And you can get a lot of these, like, 4 and 10 destroyers. You're going to be going full US, like, armoured, um, or AT tank doctrine. They used to basically have divisions made up of this, basically. <laughs> and that would be, like, their anti-tank. They wouldn't even bring anti-tank guns. Yeah, crazy stuff. So you can get the M1 gun and the M5 gun, but nothing we haven't seen before there, and the bazooka squads. Lots and lots of bazookas. I jump over to the anti-air tab. Uh, now, anti-air is looking a little slim, <laughs> that's for sure. Although, actually saying that, you do get three cards of both of us, so maybe not. All you'd need, really, in this division is probably two cards of both of us, like that. And then maybe you could squeeze in the MGMC as well, if you have the extra availability or activation points here. Um, because these can be really good for both ground support and anti-air. Not so good at anti-air, but definitely good for ripping up infantry. Right, artillery tab. Now this is where things are going to get much more interesting. So we have the artillery commander, of course. We've seen these. I think they're the same as they are in the 3rd US. We've got the 60mm mortar, 81mm mortar, 107mm mortars. And you can get a lot of cards of these 81mm mortars if you wanted to. Then there's the M2A1 howitzer with the 105mm. That's kind of interesting. Let's see the damage there. 5.25. Rate of fire. It's going to be 7 with 1 star veteran. But you probably... Actually, I guess you could probably upbet them because you don't lose that many by upbetting them. Hmm. That would make them maybe a little bit more accurate, but it might not be worth it in the long run. I think these could be really good value. It depends if they're similar to the LEFH 105s in terms of strength and how much damage they do. Because if they are, then they won't be as good. But I think the 105 will... I don't know. I think they're just going to be the same as the LEFHs, if I'm completely honest. Right, then we have the M3 Howitzer 105. This thing has a lot of damage on its heat shell, but same sort of damage as the other 105 on the... HE shells. Okay. That's interesting. I'm curious why that's worth more. It's probably because of those heat shells, I guess. They're paying the, the heat shell tax. Um, let's see. We've got the M21 mortar carriers. These are fantastic. So definitely worth getting. Oh, look at this boy. It's the xylophone incoming from Steel Division Normandy 44. Awesome stuff. To see that in Steel Division 2. And that's going to have quite a lot of damage actually on those rockets. Doesn't have, I don't think it has as much, ha as many rockets as a Katusha, but it looks like they do more damage. If, unless I'm wrong about that. But either way, these I think will be quite interesting to use. I'm really looking forward to trying these out. I obviously don't have no clue what their kind of effectiveness will be, but. Yeah, they could be actually pretty nice to use indeed. And we have the Long Tom, of course. This big boy, I can't even zoom out far enough. Oh, there we go. Um, this, of course, is a very good gun. And we've seen these before. They do come in with that M4 HST. I do like this vehicle. It's really cool. And then we got some off-map. Okay, so 203mm off-map, and you can get one, two, and three of them. I think in phase C, this will certainly be like a strong thing to use with the infantry tab, especially considering you get units like this in phase C. There's also those Churchills in phase C. I think like a phase C push with this division could be really, really strong in team games. All right, over to the air tab. So we have, first of all, P-38 Lightnings. And in Steel Division Normandy 44, Lightnings were pretty much a staple for aircraft in this division. It looks like it's more or less the same here. So I think these can be really good fighter aircraft. You can get four of them in phase A. That's actually really nice. And they 640 kilometers per hour speed. Very, very speedy boys. With four 50 cows is that. And a 20 mil cannon. These are going to rip through uh, enemy attack aircraft. Very nicely indeed. But so will the P-47 with 850 cows 
670 km per hour speed. But I think the agility is not as good. Uh, as you can see, the, the agility for the P38 is actually medium compared to the very bad of the P47. That's going to help a lot with getting the P38 on target. Now there's the ace from the second infantry, Gabby. So that is going to be an instant target for any AA. <laughs> I find like aces in Steel Division 2, they're just like shoot me signs really. Um, but it really, really nice camo regardless compared to the standard one. So that's going to be really cool. And look how many fighters that guy shot down. Wow. All right, moving on, we do have the P-47s with one 230 kilogram bomb. These could be really good for sniping support weapons, potentially, like AT guns, pack 40s pack 38s infantry guns, like IG-18s. So that's something to look out for, at least. Uh, it might, might be worth trying these just for that purpose. I'm not sure these are going to be very good at all. The P-38s rockets. Um, these light rockets probably won't do too much damage, but maybe good enough to pin down some infantry. I'll have to give them a go at some point or maybe watch somebody else use them. We have the P-38J with the 450 kilogram bombs, which is quite something. These are going to do quite a lot of damage to infantry and definitely one shot support weapons. So this might be more of a reliable bomber than the P-47. The P-47 with the 230 kilogram bomb is much faster than, well, not a crazy amount faster, but definitely faster than the P-38 and cheaper. So this might be like a more cost efficient uh, variant of bombing, for, for, for bombing uh, support weapons. And also with its extra resilience, probably survive a lot better in the dive bomb as compared to the P-38. I think these P-38s might still have the problem that they had in Stow Division only 44 where they're very brittle aircraft and they'll get shot down very quickly by upvetted AA. And finally, now this is something. This was actually removed from the game previously. It's the P-47Ds with AT rockets. These were taken out of the third US because they were very strong. But that also is because the third US has a lot of ground-based support already in the form of tanks. Whereas in the second infantry, having these will actually be really useful. But look at the price on them. 170 points. That's a lot of points. Uh, but this might be your one way to deal with things like King Tigers if you're playing as a t in second US. Assuming that your opponent doesn't have loads of AA. But yeah, it is nice that the P-47s do have that medium resilience regardless. And that's it. That's basically the first look through the second US. I'm actually really excited to put together a division for this. I think it's been really, really nice. Like if I were to quickly throw one together, we'll do that now. Um, probably grab some Ranger Marauders for sure. I think I'd bring those in phase B uh, with maybe snipers in phase A. That would be sort of my first thought. I'm not sure I'm going to be using these four GPAs too much. I don't think that the amphibious nature of this division is actually going to come to the forefront too much. Um, in terms of infantry, definitely need some leaders in phase A because I don't think you're going to want to waste leaders in the artillery tab and they also cost a lot of, of uh, points to bring in. So probably go for maybe rifle leaders in phase A or engineer leaders. I think it might be better to have engineer leaders. Oh, you can't actually get the WC-52 with the 50 cow again. That's cool. Um, but yeah, just standard leader there in phase A. So you can get three of them. Uh, so you can spread them out. And then these would be better to bring like later later on. So rifle leaders in B, I would say. It's probably decent enough. Um, then probably the demolition group in C for sure. In terms of phase A, actually I'll probably bring in the Ranger LMGs in phase B. You could probably do with some Rangers in phase A as well. Ooh, Assault Group. I mean, these are like your close range units, and then you've got like long range units in the forms of, of the Rangers. So I'll probably bring those in B. Do some Rifles in A. That would be... Would that be enough? 
Possibly not. Yeah, I'll probably go for engineers and A as well. That would probably be enough for A, B, and then probably just rifles in C. He had a lot of rifles. And that's actually going to push us over the double three mark there, but getting the leaders in there I think is going to be important. In this tab, M5A1s. Definitely in phase A, get some M4A1s in there, and then like this. Might be able to up bet some of those, but not entirely sure. Support tab, I think I'd want to try out the 230s. We definitely need plenty of supply, so we'll do phase A and C. I want to try bringing in the phase C crocodiles. We need a commander in here. Okay, and that's going to bring us up to 31 activation points already. I'm not sure there's anything else you could really fit in here. Unless you wanted to go for the flamethrowers in phase A instead of the crocodiles. Which could be a good shout, actually. I feel like the crocodiles in phase C is a bit of a stretch. So I might play around with that. But anyway, Hellcats for sure. And um, we'll get as many of those as we can. But we'll bring them in in phase B. Um, that's not the maximum amount we can get, obviously. But I think having them earlier on to sort of shut down some of the medium armor in the mid game is probably a better idea. Having AT guns is uh, definitely a good idea as well. I think the WC25 is faster than the GMC, right? So definitely worth bringing those in instead, make them up vetted. Um, probably best to just have more of those in phase B. I think the M1 guns are just better than the M5 guns in general. I'm not sure that it'd be worth bringing in the M10 destroyers over the M8 Hellcats, or M18 Hellcats, or even just adding an extra card there. We'll see how many points we have left. We definitely want phase A, phase B, and then maybe the M16, but we'll leave that out for now. Artillery tab, I want to try out the Xylophones for sure. You actually get two cards of these, I only just realized. So phase A and phase C, or phase B and C, and then we want mortar carriers in phase A, and what else could you put in here? Oh, off map in phase C. There we go. That's probably going to be my artillery tab. And then if we go over to air, then I'm probably going to need the P47s. You can get four of them in phase C. We probably want these in phase A just for fighters. And then I'm probably going to try out these bombers. You get three in phase A and four in phase B. So I'm probably just going to have them in phase A as an option. And that will likely be my air tab unless I want to bring in some P47s as fighters as well, just in case I need something with a bit more resilience. I mean, we could do like phase C with extra vet, or something like that, to upgrade their agility quite a bit and give us some really strong like late game fighters. That would leave us with three points, uh, which I could probably put here actually to bring these in phase A. But this could be a waste of points, honestly. So it looks something like that. I don't know if that's really what how I'm going to do this division. Uh, I could, of course, use to only two points and get the extra anti-air piece that I was talking about. That might be worth doing. You could put another card into the recon tab if you don't feel like you have enough. Yeah, there you go. Second infantry, guys. I think it's an awesome deck. It looks really cool, and I love a lot of the new units. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it. That's my first look at the second infantry Indian head. And hopefully that's given you some insight as to what to expect from the division and my thoughts and my process of putting a division together. I think this is okay. It could certainly do with a lot of optimization, but uh, in general, I think this could work as a sort of briefly put together deck. And I thought I would just want to share that with you in my first look at this division. But that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video where we'll be covering one of the German divisions. Goodbye.